It was a Saturday, the 16th day of April, in the year 2011, a day that would change my life. I sat parked in front of a regional treatment center for alcoholism in Brighton, Michigan. I was not there for myself, eh, not directly at least. I had just left a family session and a visit with my brother-in-law, Jeff, who had been a resident at the center for the previous three weeks. I have never been so sure of the feeling that I was having at that moment, but also never so scared. And so I was frozen in thought. I always felt that my mind worked differently than others. I grew up looking at the stars, thinking, you know, someday, an alien spacecraft is going to descend down above me, open their port, and declare, Hey, Scott, we found you. You were never supposed to be here. Let's go home. I replayed the past over and over and over. I anticipated the future, predicting what others would say and think. I often lost track of what was real. I played out stories of what he would say, how I would respond, and she would then declare the layers of imagination would grow. I would step into a room and know immediately what everybody thought of me. I could pick out those who didn't like how I dressed. I understood those who thought I walked funny. I was always looking for a way to quiet that storm. When I was young, I found brown sugar. Sweet, compactable, chewy, raw brown sugar. Spoonfuls would give me chills when snuck before Saturday morning cartoons. The feeling was always good, leaving me wanting more. I found I could silence the critics upstairs with a scoop. By the seventh grade, I had graduated. I found the drink. Stolen booze from my parents' liquor cabinet, all mixed up together so as not to take too much from any single bottle, was my drink of choice. While the burning was too great to go much beyond a buzz, it was good. It too silenced the critics. With high school came beer bongs, two liter bottles of wine cooler, and keg parties. One might expect a too much drink on a night when combined with a first cigarette, resulting in regurgitating dinner on my dad's feet, would leave me wary and wanting to avoid a repeat. But somehow the memory of that night vanished rapidly. If your relationship with alcohol is like mine, you'll understand this call of comfort. On this cool spring day in April, I had seen my brother-in-law laugh, a real solid laugh. He seemed happy, he looked relaxed, and it was genuine. I recognized that feeling of comfort that alcohol brought to me in his eyes, and he was sober. I wanted some of that. I also wanted to run and not face reality. I wanted anything artificial to make me feel better. But I was tired. I was disconnected. My world was dark, and I no longer wanted to fight. This was not the first time I had felt like this, but it was the first time that I had felt hope. If Jeff could look this way, then I may be able to feel that way myself. I always felt better on the road. The isolation and solitude of the road was always warming. With constant movement, I was in control. There are walls of cement, metal, and glass between me and the others. But my life had kind of become a roundabout. I had stopped drinking, that is, many times before, sometimes with a declaration, I'm done, for now. Sometimes I would dangle a reward, no more beer, until I make it to Friday. An excellent stopper I had become, but an expert restarter I had found myself to be. What I had seen on that Saturday afternoon was a mirror. In Jeff, I had seen what I always wanted to feel. But I also saw the shadows that I shared. In that moment, from the front seat of my car in the parking lot of a treatment center, I recognized the lack of control that I actually had. I finally saw the fear that drove my obsession to replay and predict. For the first time ever, I had clarity. And I began driving out of that parking lot with purpose. I understood the journey that I was about to begin. There are some in recovery from alcoholism who say that they are on a broad highway, no longer an escape path. We look forward on this highway to view where we are going. 
Each destination, however difficult or terrific, brings us comfort. On this road, we feel connected, and we feel part of something bigger. For many of us, we finally know peace. Right there, in my car, I conceded out loud to my steering wheel that I was an alcoholic. I had found the exit, and I had discovered the broad highway.